hunt for food, stuff like that? Uh, not really. They know I like Buffaloes though. I, I live up there. I, it's, a nice, it's a nice little spot. What's your order of Buffaloes? On like a simple day like today, I would just go in there like 15 boneless wings, sweet barbecue. It's nice and simple, you know. Where, where are you at with your three-point shot? Like, how has it translated to this level in practice against against this level of competition? Oh, uh, good. I mean, it was. It's nothing wrong with it. I know people people love to talk about it, but it's never been anything wrong. Like in high school, like I was known as a shooter, so it's like when all the little allegations and all that stuff was coming out, I was like, you just. I mean, you just got. You just got run with it. But now nah, it's definitely. It's definitely been good. Just getting my getting my feet wet. Still, just learning each day. Just right. continuing to get better. So would, you, would it be fair to describe you as a three-level scorer? Then? Yes. I mean, that's how I would describe it. Like, if you were to ask me right. how would you describe I would say that, personally. Right, and it seemed to, I mean, we heard your name, I think, a couple summers ago in terms of Indiana recruiting you, but it kind of seemed to come out of nowhere that, yeah. that you ended up here. What was kind of going on in terms of your recruitment towards the end there and, and how it came to be that you ended up here? Um, so it was here in the G League. So we were really like really focused on the G League too. So it was like when that kind of like when that obviously got like disbarred. So it was like this was like boom number one choice because both both of them it was kind of like 50 50 because you have pro coaching staff here and then you obviously know what the G League is like you go there you're a pro at a young age. So it's right. like so that those were the main two. And then when that disbarred this was boom right then and there. What was it about the visit that kind of convinced you that this was the place you wanted to be? Um, I would say the culture of Indiana just in general the coaching staff like I can see like their connection like they were real genuine so I, I really like that personally what is that culture of Indiana basketball uh I mean it's literally a winning culture but it's like I mean obviously this year we think we're gonna bring that back do do big things but I just like the connection the coaches had even just with one another like how they would talk to each other it was it was a real good bond they had one of the coaches that has stood out when we're talking to players is Cliff Marshall. Yep. What have you noticed from him this offseason? How important has he been for getting you acclimated? I mean, one thing I know, he's always positive. Like, it's never been a day that he's been negative. So I really I really think people need to learn from that. Right. Always positive. Thanks, Bryce. Bryce, I've been asking others uh, to give us a bit of a scouting report on you since mm -hmm. we haven't seen you uh, before. But now that you've been playing with, with this level of guys here for a couple of months, mm -hmm. what, part, what parts of your game do you look at and say, okay, I really need to work on that or I need to work on this? Um, I wouldn't say it's like like work on it. I just think in college terms, I would need to learn like more with the like the defensive as Indiana wants to put in. So like I'm a good defensive player, but they just want you in certain spots. I just think I just need to keep building on that. What about offensively? Uh, offensively, I mean, we're just getting better each day. Just keep working. But I mean, I've been doing, I've been holding, I've been holding my own. So just, just keep going. Indiana's had two straight Big Ten freshmen of the year. Do you, do you embrace that? Yeah, most definitely. That's the plan. Just got to keep working. Yeah. What's impressed you about uh, Miles Rice and Kane and Carlisle? What they, what they can bring? How hard they work. They work really hard. They both have high IQs. And I mean, just playing with them, being on the same team, as in you just keep learning. Just Especially me, because I like to run. And both of them are super fast. So if you get out and run with them, you're gonna, it's going to be a good day. Watching some film of you like from high school days, it seemed like you were really comfortable in the mid-range. You don't see a, a lot of emphasis on that, but I mean, how, how did you develop maybe to be comfortable in that area of the court? Was that kind of just taking what you were given at that level, or, or what was that? That's a good question. I mean, I think when I was coming up, you know, most most high school guys is loosely either they're just a straight shooter or they're just like a straight slasher. So it's like when you do a certain move in high school, and you just stop and just pull up. Dudes aren't like really expecting it, so they just like like if you watch certain clips, like certain dudes, I would do a move and they would just keep running. <laughs> so it was like they just they just didn't know it was coming. So me and my dad, we worked on that a lot. Heading into your first season with Indiana, what do you want Indiana fans to know about you? Uh, I work hard every day. I mean, I'm here to win. Just. Yeah, expect me to come out there and try to win these games. Has there been any like welcome to college moments in the summer and workouts or anything like that where you're like, wow, these, this is a different level? Or have you felt pretty comfortable the whole time? Yeah, I, I felt pretty comfortable. It's been, it hasn't really been anything that really like caught me off guard. Okay. Okay. So I'm curious like, for when you come in here, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of the rest of this roster that got sort of built after yeah. you. Like, like how exciting was that for you like day after day after day? When, I mean, it was huge because, I mean, obviously you guys know, like, right when I committed, I think Liam just decommitted. So it was like, it was a lot going on. And so when they, when I saw all those names coming out, I did like some research on them and I was like, man, we, we're, they're definitely building a good team. Was it kind of weird committing here, kind of not knowing who you're going to be playing with? It's a great question. 
Um, it was just a little bit, but I mean, you come here and you saw, like he said, all those names that were coming. And it was like, you know, like the coaching staff, I got a, like a vibe from them that they were going to be able to build what we have, like the, the current guys and then the new guys that came in. So I think I think we'll be solid. What role have your parents played into shaping you as a person and as a basketball player? Everything. Because I, we haven't really had any other like coaches in my life besides high school. Because it's like without the AAU thing, you know, a lot of AAU guys, they like tag along with the kids and stuff. But it's like, we, it's just it's just been me and my parents, just the whole ride, really. How do you think that change your development just in terms of not playing AAU like a lot of these other players um, have? I would say it was strictly work. Like it's not a lot of it's not a lot of voices in your ear. Like me personally, I was only listening to like my dad. So it's like even though he would take me to play certain area like the little programs and stuff, it was mainly him just telling me how to get better each day, day in, day out. That was really it for me.